The ocean offers improved chances for some animals to grow bigger because the buoyancy of water takes away some of the strain of gravity. And one aquatic life form has trended up over millions of years to a size so unimaginable that even scientists have a hard time understanding how they survive. The blue whale, the largest creature that has ever lived. Whales weren't always big, and in fact, their ancestors didn't even live in the ocean. Whales started out on land. The ancestors of whales were sort of dog-like creatures that are most closely related to today's hippos, and they moved back into the water, probably to feed on fish. Millions of years of adaptation later, modern whales emerged, now fully aquatic. Their size, about the same as today's dolphins, until they suddenly hit a mysterious growth spurt. About five or seven million years ago, whales became huge. They became supersized. We don't really know why that happened. It's very much a mystery. The mystery of why the whales got big is just one of the many that has baffled the scientific community. No one has ever understood how these massive beasts, 90% as heavy as the Statue of Liberty and nearly as tall, could survive on a diet consisting mainly of one of the smallest foods in the ocean. Some of the larger species of whale tend to specialize on what we call krill, which are small crustaceans that occur um, all throughout the water column. Jeremy Goldbogen and Nick Pyanson, biologists working at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, believe they are on to the whale's secrets. How they feed and how they grew. They start with what they know for sure. Whales gotta eat. Large body size means that you have enormous resource requirements. It's just a basic law of physics. You have such a large body mass, you have to eat a lot of food just to sustain that, that body mass. The blue whale needs a ton of food a day to survive. It feeds here on the surface, opening wide to envelop as much as 18,000 gallons of water at once. That's about 30 hot tubs worth. The whale then expels the water back to the sea while keeping the krill in its mouth. It traps the krill with a unique curtain wall of tough plates dangling from the roof of its mouth called baleen. Over evolutionary time, they've lost their teeth and baleen simply hangs down. It's a simple sieve mechanism that will filter out prey from water. But even with baleen, the whale only captures about 20 pounds of krill at the surface. That means 100 meals a day, a seemingly impossible task. It makes you wonder whether or not the baleen whales can meet their daily energetic requirements. Clearly, the whales could not be so big unless they ate enough. Could their size be related to the way they got their food? A huge break in the case came by accident. In 2003, Goldbogen worked on a joint expedition with Scripps Oceanographic and Cascadian Research that attached recording devices to whales with suction cups to track singing behavior. The tags measure such things as how fast they go, uh, how deep they go, when they're swimming. But the whales didn't sing and the data seemed useless until Goldbogen realized that the whales were acting strangely tremendously active. A detailed analysis revealed that the whales were feeding 600 feet down below the surface. Could this secret dining spot hold the key to the whale's success? This is the first time we've been able to see what a whale is doing underwater, at least a whale this big. Using the data, the team constructed the first detailed explanation of the whale's deep dive feeding. First, the whale turns head down and powerfully beats its tail a few times to gain momentum. 
after the first 40 feet of descent, the whale's lungs collapse from increased water pressure, and it drops like a lead weight. Citing a dense mass of krill, it suddenly opens its mouth nearly 90 degrees wide. The whale quickly shuts its mouth, squeezes out the water over 30 seconds, and traps the krill behind the baleen filter. An adult fin whale can execute a lunge in about six seconds. It takes three seconds to lower the jaws and three seconds to close the jaws. The jaw snap is one half of the technique. The second is the huge cavity that opens up beneath the lower jaw. So this would be similar to what we have right here under our chin. So their tissue runs from the chin all the way to the belly button. The research shows that each deep dive averages four lunges and lasts about seven minutes before the whales have to come up for air. In the Southern Ocean alone, krill constitutes 500 million tons of biomass, twice that of humans and krill appear in oceans all over the world. This plentiful food supply for whales turns out to be a key factor in their evolution as giants of the sea. With dense packs of krill available 600 feet down, even at only 20 pounds a bite, the whales can get enough food in just four hours a day, leaving plenty of time for singing. The team thinks that the development of baleen and lunge feeding just might finally account for the whale's mysterious and rapid evolution to supersize five to seven million years ago. One reason that whales can grow so large is that the buoyancy of water helps counteract the effects of gravity. But sauropods, the largest creatures ever to live on land, had no such advantages, yet they managed to grow nearly as big. How did they do it? Sauropods had necks that were completely out of bounds of human experience. In the world of big, nothing on land has ever topped the sauropods. A plant-eating subgroup of dinosaurs, sauropods roamed the entire globe 200 million years ago ranging up to 130 feet long, nearly the length of the White House. They set all the records for land animal size. They were even too big for T-Rex to attack. We don't find very much evidence of big sauropods being attacked by big predatory dinosaurs, things like Tyrannosaurus rex. Be up to 30 or 40 feet long and maybe seven tons. These are fearsome animals, but they're just no match for a full-grown sauropod. These beasts were so much bigger than anything else that has ever lived on land that scientists knew the combination of factors that produced them must be unique. What was the secret of the sauropod's success? This is Brachiosaurus. This animal is 75 feet long, 45 feet tall, and weighed about 30 tons. Evolutionary biologist Matt Wadel has been working at the riddle for years. All the conditions had to be just right to produce this freak of nature. He picked up his first clue when scientists discovered that the Earth in the age of dinosaurs was very different from our own. Sauropods almost lived on a different planet, not separated from us in space, but in time. What made the planet different was the atmosphere. Recent analysis of fossil records suggests that carbon dioxide levels during the Triassic period, just at the start of the age of dinosaurs, soared to the highest levels ever. As a result, plant growth exploded. When we grow plants today under those conditions, they grow to almost double the size. More carbon dioxide breathing plants meant more food for plant eaters. And there have never been vegetarians who ate more than the sauropods. 
For the very largest sauropods, the daily requirement for food was probably on the order of a ton of vegetation every day. Their heads are just biting machines. Not only did they not chew their food, they couldn't chew their food because their teeth didn't meet up the way ours do. They could just shovel it in and keep getting bigger. It took relatively little energy for the sauropods to eat. One reason why plant eaters have the potential to get bigger than meat eaters. But as they evolved through millions of years, their growing enormity meant they needed gigantic muscles to move heavier and heavier bones, including the seemingly impossible sauropod neck. Some of these necks were 40 or maybe even 50 feet long. Now, how does an animal hold up and support and move around a neck that's so long? Today, the largest neck at seven and a half feet belongs, of course, to the giraffe. But giraffe bones are heavy and restrict movement. And sauropod bones dwarf them. All right, that looks great. This is a neck vertebra of Supersaurus. This is the largest vertebra that we have ever found on Earth. It's four and a half feet long. Now let's see how that compares to a vertebra from the neck of giraffe. This is one of seven vertebrae from the neck of a giraffe. This is one of 15 from the neck of Supersaurus. If sauropod neck bones were as dense as a giraffe's, the 15 vertebrae strand of Supersaurus would weigh more than 10,000 pounds. How could the Supersaurus lift bones so massive with neck muscles so relatively slender? Because the bones have turned to fossilized rock, their weight in life is unknown. But way to learn that a graduate student at Brigham Young University in Utah, Brooks Britt, had been using scanning technology on dinosaur bones. From uh, the parks. Britt suggested that Wadle scan neck bones to see if subtle differences in the fossilized rock could reveal the bone's original structure. Nobody's probably scanned a Diplodocus vertebra that's in this good a shape. The CAT scan will allow the first look ever at the interior of this 145 million year old Diplodocus neck bone. The different densities of rock within the bone are invisible to the naked eye, but the scanner clearly reveals that the bones in life were feather light. There's cavities all through this. Like car tires, the bones are pneumatic. They are 60 to 70% filled with air. Wadel suspects that the bones were not only light and easy to lift, they also helped get oxygen directly to the muscles, fed by a system of air sacs throughout the neck, similar to birds today. Sauropods were probably about 10% lighter than they would have been otherwise. Now those effects ripple through the entire biology of the animal. You don't need as much oxygen. You can grow faster because you don't have to put on as much mass. Just because they're hollow doesn't mean the neck bones aren't strong. Air-filled cavity design is widespread in engineering, from sneakers to the strong neck-like framework of a construction crane arm. The material that's get replaced is not serving any structural purpose. Bighorn sheep are butting heads at very high velocities, very huge forces involved. Their horns are pneumatic, so pneumatic doesn't mean weak. The sauropods had hit on just the right mix to become a freak of nature. Hollow bones, plenty of food, and a huge size to deter predators. They had everything going for them. You've got dinosaurs all over the place. You have big ones, you have small ones. Some of them eat meat, some of them eat plants. And everything's going just fine because they are well adapted to their environments. But then all of a sudden, the rules change. 65 million years ago, striking with the energy of 100 million tons of TNT, an asteroid brought the reign of the dinosaurs to a sudden, shocking end. 
the heat pulse from the blast circled the globe and raised the temperature to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit, killing the biggest dinosaurs and more within hours.